College Gym Vids fan going live on YouTube. This is another Christmas episode of Rescue 911. And I'm actually going to my mother's house to celebrate Christmas today because my sister in law works Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. So we're actually opening up our presents on December 22nd. Now I'm going to go to Tiki mm -hmm. Live because that's where I get the Rescue 911. Now I go to watch all your favorite shows recorded. I'm going to put Christmas ornament fire and San Francisco documentary. Loading video, please wait. Mr. Court, I believe that all children should be taught CPR all over the United States. Oh, I guess this is the end of the sixth grade CPR episode. And if they're taught, there'll be a lot of... Christmas ornament fire, San Francisco doc, San Francisco doc. Not every hero sets out to make headlines. The achievements of real heroes can be seen in the faces of the people whose lives they've touched. I'm William Shatner. When we began Rescue 911 more than four years ago, we hoped we might be able to enlighten as well as entertain. But we never imagined so many viewers would turn words and images into action. More than 200 lives have been saved as a result of what people have learned from watching this program. Tonight, in a special episode of Rescue 911, we pay tribute to these men, women, and children <coughs> who were inspired to step forward in an emergency and knew how to make a difference. We begin during the holiday season of 1992 in Dover, Foxcroft, Maine. Zita and Peter Stevens and their two young daughters were getting ready for Christmas in the new house Peter had finally finished after five years. <laughs> December 20th. Pretty good time for snow around here. And I work for the Department of Transportation. I run a plow truck. The road was slippery. They wanted to come to work. While Zita did laundry in the basement, her two daughters, including seven year old Danielle, played nearby. It looks like they were doing gymnastics. They have a balance beam. This story is right up my alley. I love gymnastics. I actually do gymnastics. I have videos of me doing gymnastics on my channel. <laughs>
Tina Stevens was in the basement of her home doing laundry with her two young daughters, unaware that in the living room upstairs, the Christmas tree had caught fire and flames were quickly spreading through the house. <laughs> Within 10 minutes of the call, units of the Dover Fox Sprout Fire Department arrived, led by Fire Chief Joe Gaia. Mm -hmm. Fire was coming out three sides of the Dover. There was an un ungodly mm -hmm. amount of fire. If Zeta had not closed the upstairs door, it would have acted as a backdraft when the downstairs door had been opened. It would have blown them right out through. I'm quite sure of it with that amount of fire. Peter rushed home as soon as he heard about the fire. And I was trying to calm Zeta down so she could explain what was going on. And then she told me that if it wasn't for Danielle, that they wouldn't be there. So they come up to me and they said, you lost everything. And I said, no. I said, my family's fine. This is just a bunch of boys burning. I built one, I can build another one. At least I have something to build one for. When I was back in sixth grade, there was a classmate of mine that the whole family burned because their house got on fire and they went to the back door to get out and it was spike shot. And that really stuck to me hardcore. And I told Danielle, I said, there's, there's no way that you'll be trapped in this house in case of something. I said, this is a stone exit. You can always come out. Just open the door and, and kick your way out. Six months later, the Stevens family has rebuilt their house and their lives. We took the precautions that any family takes. We had smoke detectors, but I panicked. It's an incredible thing to look back and know that my seven-year-old daughter was the person that I depended on in crisis. Oh, you from here. She had said that she knew to shut the door at the top of the stairs because one episode of Rescue 911 told that if you're in a room with a door, you should shut the door and somehow keep the smoke from coming in. Danielle was one smart little girl that did the right things to save her family. If you take your hat off to a little girl that can, can pull what she did off without panicking herself. I mean, she was, she saved her mama and her sister. Next. Tonight happens to be New Year's, but not only a full moon, but a blue moon, and it brings the crazy people out.
Every year during the holidays, the number of emergencies that occur sharply rises. This next story is not a reenactment. It's the reality inside the trauma unit of San Francisco General Hospital on one of the wildest nights of the year. Tonight happens to be New Year's with not only a full moon, but a blue moon. And for whatever reason, crazier things happen and it brings the crazy people out. <laughs> On this rainy night, paramedics Marco Cornelia and Brett Powell are sent to the scene of the shooting. In the liquor store? Did you see the gun at all? The gun? Yeah, it's part of it. There was a supposed uh, conversation between the suspect and the uh, victim in there. The victim viewed a fight between the suspect and his girlfriend. The victim went to intervene and he was shot in the process. Yeah, single wound as you see there. I had it rolled in the look his neck and only heard gun go off once. He doesn't know how big it was or what it was. You never know where the bullets go or what they've gone through. They could ricochet around. It's real important for us to get that patient to the trauma center as soon as you can. The injury was such that, for all I know, he could be dying within minutes. send the squad in to try and get to the tree and they couldn't. The 27 year old shooting victim is admitted to the trauma unit of San Francisco General Hospital and examined by attending physician Dr. Ronald Deepman. When a bullet enters the abdomen, this very rapidly advances to shock and circulatory failure and death if an intervention is not done in a very timely manner. Yeah, I know you are. Can someone call HMV, please? Uh, we need a chest X-ray. 60 on the monitor, your pressure is 80. Okay. Is your belly hair when I press on it right there? Yeah. No, it's not going. Give it to me. Oh, it's tiny here. It's a <laughs> Sergeant James Fry is one of only 90 officers patrolling thousands of people in the square. We were still in front of the hotel, and you could just see the top of the tree swaying like this, and you could see all these people out on the limbs.
He had a gunshot wound from one side of his chest and abdomen to the other side. It was very clear to us that he needed surgery immediately. The shooting victim is taken into surgery within an hour of the incident. He has a bad injury of his liver, has a the injury and exit wound um, from the left lobe of his liver coming out the right lobe of his liver, and it's a difficult place to get control of, and that's what we're trying to do right now. <coughs> we pushed our way through to the tree, and it, there was indeed one fellow laying along the concrete. He was on the ground all doubled up. Obviously, very seriously injured. I mean, there's no doubt there was something really wrong with the fellow. I got on the radio and I told him that we were surrounded, we were trapped, we couldn't get out, we're taking rocks and bottles, we need some backup, I need an ambulance, I do have somebody here that's hurt. Surgeon Bruce Parker looks in on the 27-year-old shooting victim the day after the operation. He was very lucky. It was a major caliber bullet, and if he had turned right or left, you know, inches, you know, he said like, he could be dead. He could have died before he got to the hospital. Oh, my brain is going to have a difficulty breathing right now. Uh, that was the greatest part of the whole night. It was 911 knowing that I was going to be taken care of and I wasn't going to just bleed to death on somebody's front door. I thank God that they did come as fast as they did. 
I'm so grateful for that. <laughs> that same day, paramedic Tom Lieber checks in on the youth who fell from the tree. Doctors expect he will still be able to walk. Hey, Charlie, how are you doing? How he got away without getting a head injury or an injury to his neck, I think it's just pure luck of the fall. I think he's very, very lucky. It's more exciting than what you really wanted to deal with, huh? Oh, uh, yeah, it's more than I bargained for when I first started going up, huh? When I hit, I was thinking, boy, am I stupid. But, uh, I was just, I was just very scared. I thought for sure I was going to be paralyzed. I don't know how to teach him about not being daredevil, but there's, there's, there's no payoff, there's only risk. There's nothing to gain. The problem was we had been drinking, and that was part of the reason I made such a bad decision. You know? So, I don't know. Maybe I'm a... I kind of hope like, that I'm a good example of a bad example. Neither he nor his father has forgotten all the people who came to his aid. If I had a really incredible, it would be a good situation for a child with that, taking care of me. I'm so appreciative that people will pick people up after they injured themselves or got in an accident. It's just like angels of mercy. And they're great. For more Rescue 911 videos, hit the big red button and subscribe. Merry Christmas to all my YouTube subscribers. I'm going to my mom's house today to celebrate Christmas. We're, celeb we're opening our presents on December 22nd because my sister-in-law has to work on December 24th and December 25th. I asked for an iPad from Santa so I can record my YouTube videos because right now I'm doing it with my iPhone. So I will do an unboxing video of my iPad. Hit the big red button and subscribe. Peace out, YouTube.